the history of this idea actually goes back uh, to the 1960s. And uh, three uh, very smart people, uh, Leslie Orgel, uh, Carl Lewis, Francis Crick, uh, hypothesized uh, in part on the basis of the complex folded structure of tRNA um, that an early stage of life might have evolved RNA as the sole macromolecular basis of uh, evolved machinery. And so this lets you think of simple cells emerging with just a single um, biopolymer uh, RNA and then later on it, as, as uh, evolution developed more complex cellular structures, uh, information storage became specialized in DNA and most functional activities became specialized uh, as, the, as the job of proteins. Now, uh, although these ideas were put forth in rather elementary form in the 60s, and of course nobody took them seriously at the time uh, because there was absolutely no experimental evidence uh, for the idea that RNA could catalyze chemical reactions. At the time, uh, people had just started to get very detailed, high-resolution information about how proteins catalyzed reactions. And the idea that uh, a molecule like RNA could do the same thing seemed uh, ludicrous. So it wasn't until almost 20 years later, uh, with the work of Tom Cech and Sid Altman, uh, and the experimental demonstration that RNA molecules could actually uh, very effectively catalyze at least certain types of chemical reactions, that people took this whole idea of an RNA-based early stage of life seriously. And so that hypothesi hypothesis, the RNA world hypothesis, was really, uh, uh, the ideas were summarized by, by Wally Gilbert in an article in 1986, uh, and, and this has really become uh, uh, the foundation of a lot of thinking about early stages in the emergence uh, of life. Okay, so apart from the basic fact that RNA does and can catalyze chemical reactions, is there any other evidence that early life might have been uh, based more exclusive, exclusively on nucleic acids? And in fact, there are several lines of circumstantial evidence. Uh, so uh, one of them is the structure of many cofactors. Uh, so here you see uh, acetyl-CoA, uh, just one example. Um, but the, uh, the working part of the molecule is the thioester out here. And for no obvious reason, there's a nucleotide at the other end. Uh, and really the only way to make sense of that is that the nucleotide is a handle uh, either a, a relic of a primitive ribozyme or something that was easy for primitive ribozymes to grab hold of and, uh, and thereby using this cofactor catalyze reactions uh, in a thioester uh, mediated way. Now there, there are uh, other examples. Uh, here is uh, vitamin B12, uh, another very important catalyst. Uh, it's its working part is this complex uh, corin ring, uh, but down here you see, again, uh, a nucleotide. What's it doing there? It's probably another relic of the RNA world when all of this complicated biochemistry was being catalyzed by RNA enzymes. Okay. Uh, yet another example is the very way that the substrates for DNA synthesis are made. And they're not made de novo, as you might expect if DNA came first. They're actually made from pre-existing ribonucleotides. And so the transformation of ribonucleotides to deoxynucleotides is catalyzed by the enzyme ribonucleotide reductase. And this unusual uh, synthetic pathway can be viewed as the relic of the fact that early in time, uh, metabolism and RNA synthesis used ribonucleotides and only later when DNA was invented or evolved uh, was there a requirement to make deoxynucleotides and so they're made from the closest available substrate. Okay, finally, perhaps the most important and dramatic uh, piece of evidence uh, for the early role of RNA uh, in primitive forms of life is the actual structure 
of the ribosome. And so this is a slide uh, from Tom Stites uh, showing a view into the active site of the large sub subunit. The, so this is the peptidyl transferase center. And this little green structure in here uh, is a transition state analog that marks out the place in this gigantic machine where the chemistry is happening. And what you can see is that it's these uh, gray squiggles, which are the, the RNA, that completely make up that active site. So all uh, proteins are generated by an RNA machine, the, the RNA uh, central region of the ribosome itself. So again, this only makes sense in terms of an early stage of biochemistry dominated by RNA functions, uh, which then over time evolved the ability to make uh, proteins which are now so important in all modern biochemistry. So, uh, if we want to understand the origin of life, what we need to think about is not simply how to make these incredibly complex modern cells, but we need to think about how to go from chemistry to very simple RNA-based cellular structures. Okay, 